What is up party people? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Jamila. This is Jamila Be Readin because I do be reading and we're here for my November wrap up. I had a really good reading month despite the fact that I was dying. I was so busy. I had so much stuff going on with school. I had my first draft of my capstone due. Finals started. Well, they haven't started, but I started studying for finals. I'm in the midst of that right now. I am halfway done. But anyways, I read well and I read good. So let's get into it. So at the beginning of November, I read a nonfiction book, which is great. I actually read two nonfiction books and it was nonfiction November. So <laughs> I'm very proud of myself. But I read Bad Fat Black Girl Notes from a Trap Feminist by Cecily Bowen. This is part memoir, part observations and commentary on black womanhood and black queerness. I was able to get um, an advanced listener's copy from Libro FM. It had actually already been out like maybe a couple weeks before I listened to it. So um, I highly recommend the audiobook. It was narrated by the author and it just felt like you were having a conversation with a friend or you were listening to like a very like chill podcast it was just so good i think that she had a lot of interesting things to say about being a black woman there was one part in particular that really resonated with me and that um a lot of media and books about uh, black girls and black women lately have been focused on finding their identity within their blackness or you know being mixed race or something or growing up in a predominantly white area and having to deal with being like the only black person there and finding and being comfortable in their blackness in that situation which is something like I personally relate to that because I did grow up in a predominantly white neighborhood i went to predominantly white schools i'm currently going to a predominantly white law school so that narrative is very familiar to me but i really appreciated that she talked about you know a lot of black girls especially black girls like in the south or in big cities that have larger black populations like there is no like finding their blackness they that's just something that they grew up being comfortable with and we need to see more of that in our media and our books and i completely agree but anyways go check this one out i gave this one five stars it was so good and i think if you're someone who is kind of hesitant to get into nonfiction, i think this is a great place to start because it just feels so approachable and like i said it feels like you're kind of having a conversation with a friend then i read black sun by rebecca rowan horace this is the first book in the Between Earth and Sky series. A uh, little late to the game. I know this one came out, I think at the end of last year, maybe. And the second one is coming out early 2022. I'm very excited. This one, again, I really, really enjoyed this one. I <laughs> said this in my bookstagram review and on TikTok. This book like brought me back into the fantasy fold, especially high fantasy, and I've been very excited to like dive deeper into the fantasy genre i always say that it's my favorite genre but this year i really haven't been reading a lot of high fantasy but this was such a refreshing read it is set in pre-columbian americas we're following multiple povs and we're kind of um going towards uh like we're seeing a countdown happening in each chapter sometimes we go back to the past and sometimes but we're moving forward but we're ultimately leading towards this thing called the convergence and we're following the povs of um a sea captain who is tasked with taking the other pov i'm forgetting names hang on so we are uh, following Ziala, who is a uh, captain of a ship. She is also has the ability to like calm the waters and like it makes her a really good captain. Um, and she is tasked with carrying Serapio, who is a young, blind, scarred man cloaked in his destiny. He she has to take him to the holy city of Tova by this convergence. We're also following another POV. I'm forgetting her name, but she um, is one of the like holy city, like spiritual members. I'm forgetting the name of it now, but 
it's just it was so good it's like from the get-go it reels you in like from that first chapter i was like oh okay i'm along for the ride and even though it's a book that's almost 500 pages i read it over the course of like two days maybe a little less than that i just once i started reading i was like i i can't stop i need to know what's gonna happen I'm so excited for the second book. All of the characters are so interesting. I especially love Ziala and Serapio like I know many others who have read this book do. Uh, I, if you haven't checked this one out, definitely go and read it. Then I read a rom-com. I read How Sweet It Is by Dylan Newton, I think is the author. This one was fine. To be quite honest, I don't remember much about this book. Um, it was kind of forgettable, but it was really enjoyable in the moment. So if you're looking for like a quick light rom-com to read, I would check this one out. I think the basic premise is that you have this woman who is an event planner and you have this dude who is a thriller horror author. Um, he's known as like the Knight of Darkness or something like that. I, I don't know if it's actually called that, but he is really tired of this like persona that's been kind of put on him and he wants to like write romance and all of that stuff but anyways they come together because the lady i am i don't remember any of these people's names she is um putting on the book launch for his most recent book and she kind of serves as his muse as he's writing this romance book it was cute it was simple it is what it is. All right, and then I read another advanced listener's copy through the Libro FM influencer program. This is called The Golden Couple by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. This one is coming out March 8th of 2022. It is a thriller book. I actually really enjoyed this one. I've never read from this duo, although I've heard of their other books. I've heard really mixed things about their other books. But to be honest, I didn't really know what to expect. I just like was in a thriller mood. So I just ran with it and listened to it. And it was really, really engaging. Um, we're following Avery Chambers. She is a psychologist, a therapist. She is like no longer has her license. Like she lost her license because she has this very controversial 10-step um, program where she can fix you in 10 sessions she comes across a marissa and matthew bishop who are um like really big in the dc like political lawyer sphere um they seem to have like the perfect marriage the perfect family but they are having like marital issues so they go to her and it kind of just unravels from there there's like a lot of mysterious things going on avery's trying to figure out what's going on with this couple it's just it was it was a wild ride and i had a fun time listening to the audiobook um is it like my new favorite thriller no but i did enjoy uh reading it so if you're interested in this one like i said it comes out in march so be on the lookout for that <laughs> okay and then <laughs> what did become my new favorite thriller was winter counts by david hesco wombly wyden ah uh, definitely contender for one of my best books of the year this was so good this was like a crime thriller mystery we're following virgil wounded horse who is kind of like the local enforcer um on his reservation the uh rosebud indian reservation in south dakota he is kind of like the go-to person when the justice system fails to help people on the reservation which is often um and so he um gets kind of tasked with figuring out what's going on with this new potent drug that is coming onto the reservation um he kind of teams up with his ex-girlfriend they're trying to figure it out it's it's basically just like a crime thriller <laughs> it's like a very basic premise but it was just written so good it was very engaging this is another one that I listened to on audio and I was just finding an excuse to do something where I could listen to the audiobook because I have a hard time just like sitting down listening to an audiobook um so I would like go on walks so I'd like go drive pointless errands just so I could listen to the audiobook it was so good and I just wanted to keep listening to it and it's just like it was thrilling it was engaging i kept wondering what was going to happen next all of the characters were really compelling 
and it was emotional especially at the end there's like something that happens at the very end where it's like emotional in a good way and i was like kind of crying a little bit it was so good it's very much steeped in this reservations culture and this tribe's culture and it deals with um themes of being biracial and how that has impacted virgil growing up in this reservation and kind of feeling um like on the outs and being ostracized by others. It was very good. I definitely recommend reading the author's note. Uh, I think it's very important because it provides really good resources and information on how the justice system fails um, indigenous people here. Uh, so definitely read this book. It was so good. Uh, I In my thriller journey this year, I have yet to give a book five stars and this is the first one, so. All I'm saying, it was it was good. It was very good. Then I read my second nonfiction book of November. It was Cultish, The Language of Fanaticism by Amanda Montel. <sighs> you know, this one is has been really popular. A lot of people have been picking this one up. And I will say it's a very approachable uh, nonfiction book. So again, if you're someone who's trying to like get into nonfiction, I think this is a great one to read. Again, I listened to this one on audio and Unfortunately for me, it just like was okay. I ended up giving this one three stars and I think that's partly uh, like a me thing. I <laughs> One thing about me is that I love doing deep dives into like culty like things, MLMs. I watch a lot of anti MLM content on YouTube. I watch a lot of stuff um, kind of looking at and analyzing some of these like bigger, popular influencers and like influencer like brands and like like for example the breakaway movement like trying to like teach people how to be influencers all that kind of like weird kind of culty things i spend a lot of time like consuming so a lot of the information that was provided in this book was not new to me um and one thing too is that the whole like I guess thesis of this book is that language plays a really big role in how cults or culty things are able to like take and get as large and influential as they are and so the author has a linguistic background so I was kind of just hoping to get more into the linguistic and language aspect of cults and culty things and we do get that a little bit but it just didn't feel like deep enough. I wanted it to be a lot deeper and I think it really would have been interesting to see how the language aspect translated into like other culty things like incels or like white supremacist organizations and maybe that just like was not her lane and that's fine but I just think we could have gotten a lot more with this than we did but I think if you are not like me who spends a lot of like random time doing deep dives into this stuff then I think it is a good like starting point and I would recommend it. The audiobook was really listenable. So yeah. Then I read a few quick romances. Uh, first, I read The Mistletoe Motive by Chloe Leese. This was a holiday romance. It is a workplace rivals to lovers. We also have um, representation for demisexuality, autism, and diabetes. This was like a fun, quick, holiday romance I don't really have much to say about it uh I've mentioned that like workplace rivals or enemies to lovers don't usually work for me but uh it tends to just be a little more like petty and unprofessional and I'm like I don't like this but I actually didn't mind it in this book it was fun I thought the characters had really great chemistry it was cute uh it was quick I don't know if you're looking for a little like cute holiday romance then check this one out uh, then I read an arc of Devon and Chris Plan a Wedding by Shensia C. Higgins. I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. This is a queer rom-com, a sapphic rom-com, and it was so cute.
Um, Devon and Chris have amazing chemistry. It was a bit insta lovey, but I was like able to let that go because I was just having a really great time reading this book. Um, the amount of like open communication that was happening in this book was so refreshing. I was like, damn, there ain't no miscommunication here because people are fucking talking right now. And I was here for it. I loved it. The side characters were great. Devon and Chris were great separately and together they had their own like little mini arcs like i i was just like really impressed because this book wasn't that long um but it managed to do a lot in the short amount of time that it was and it was just really cute okay um this one comes out january 25th so definitely check this one out when it comes out then i read firekeeper's daughter by angeline Bully, and this was also really good <laughs> Oh, this one was so a lot. It was very emotional. It was very uh, just a lot of a lot of things were happening in this book. I once I finished it, I had to like immediately watch something that was like fun and happy because I was just feeling t some type of way at the end of this book. This one is kind of similar in pre in premise actually to Winter Counts. This time we're following Donis Fontaine, who is an eighteen year old biracial um girl living in her well she's living near her Ojibwe reservation she just from the get-go there's like a lot of tragedy that's happening with her um someone close to her dies and she witnesses it um then she gets roped into an FBI investigation um because there are drugs coming into this community so she gets roped in and is like kind of an undercover agent she's not an agent but she's like kind of working undercover to figure out who in this reservation and in her community is bringing in these drugs it's yeah it's a lot um <laughs> a lot was happening but i thought it had really great it was just like well written like the actual like words and how it was put together was really beautiful i thought i really appreciated how much donis had respect for her community especially considering um similarly to virgil in winter counts she is biracial and she's also not enrolled in her um tribe uh just because her father was not listed on her birth certificate there was like a lot of complications going on and so despite that she like loves her community so much and she like really takes the time to like understand the traditions and her culture and while also acknowledging like her privilege because she is very white passing and I just yeah it was like a really good Donis was a really good character like I really enjoyed reading from her perspective and um yeah there was a lot of like heartwarming moments there's a lot of like gut-wrenching moments in this book um definitely look up the trigger warnings for this book because there's a lot um off the top of my head there's like on page murder there is on page sexual assault uh there's violence and blood and gore a lot is going on in this book and yeah but i think it's a really important book the only thing is for me is i thought the ro the romance was unnecessary there was also a power imbalance that i'm not going to get into right now but there was an, a power imbalance that i don't think was like acknowledged all that much at least in the way that i would have liked to have seen and the last 60 pages or so were just <laughs> rocketing forward i mean so much was happening in a short amount of time and i think um it was already a long book but i think it needed a little bit more the pacing was just off at the end but i still would highly recommend this one it was really good and wow lastly i read what i think might actually be my favorite book of the year i'm not sure you'll have to find out because i will be doing like all of my end of year wrap-up videos towards the end of december and early uh january but i read olga dies dreaming by zochiel gonzalez and wow <laughs> was this one good let me tell you um, this was another one that I read through the ALC uh, Libro FM program. Um, it comes out January 8th, January 4th, or you can get it through the December book of the month box. But this was <laughs> so good. So we're following 
technically we're following multi POVs, but our main, like, main character is Olga. She is a wedding planner. She is, um, she comes from a very interesting background. So she's Puerto Rican. She grew up in Brooklyn. Her parents were part of the Young Lords, which were like this revolutionary group from Puerto Rico, um, advocating for, fighting for Puerto Rico's uh, freedom from American colonization. And so her mom ended up leaving her and her brother and her father um, when she was like young, like around 13, and went off to basically become a revolutionary. She abandoned her family, dedicated to the cause, and that's that on that. Um, her brother ended up becoming like a politician in New York. She's a wedding planner, like I said, basically doing like event and wedding planning for like New York's elite. And so it's just a really interesting look at their lives and how, you know, they grew up with all of these kind of like revolutionary teachings and how. I don't even know how to <laughs> go about talking about this book. There's so much going on. Um, like, Olga is, like, ended up working for the people that her, like, mom and her parents would have hated. And she's, like, kind of dealing with that and, like, re reevaluating her life. She's, like, 40. And her brother's, like, 45. They're, like, older. Okay, so... Don't let that, like, deter you. I know a lot of people on BookTube and on the book community are younger, but it it doesn't feel, I don't know. I don't know what reading about older people feels like. It did, But it didn't feel like um, I was reading about someone who was, like, super old or something like that. I don't, I don't know. I'm, like, uh, I'm 26, so obviously I'm, like, a lot younger than Olga, but there was a lot of stuff that I related to with her reading this book. Anyway, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna end right now, actually, because I'm just gonna go off on, like, this weird tangent. It was really good. It was really good. There was lots of col uh, conversations about just colonization and racism and gentrification and you know just like you know being queer in a latinx community just all of that it's just some good good soup you know what i'm saying it was just it just hit it hit um <laughs> hopefully that convinces you to read this one i loved it the audiobook is really good um interspersed actually we get like letters that um, Olga receives from her mom throughout the years while she's out gallivanting as a revolutionary. It's just really interesting. And just like to look at motherhood because like I think it's like on one hand, I'm like it's really admirable that she like her mother was so dedicated to the cause. But at the same time, she was kind of a shitty mother, am I right? You know, so terrible, terrible mother. Yeah, anyways, um, this is also set in, like, 2017, around the time that Hurricane Maria, like, devastated Puerto Rico. So, there's, like, that context contextually happening in the background. Oh, okay. I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna leave it at that. It was good. I love this book. Honestly, I had a great reading month. I enjoyed mostly everything. Like, Cultish was, like, the lowest rated book that I read this month, and even then it wasn't bad, so... Yeah, hopefully December treats me just as well. Um, I hope December treats you well. Happy holidays. Um, if you celebrate, I'm not going to say Happy New Year. We're at the beginning of the month, and I'll, I will definitely post mo more videos before the end of the month, hopefully. I'm, I'm going to be entering winter break soon, so uh, I'm going to stop rambling. Uh, I will have links down below to my various social media pages if you want my quick bite-sized reviews of books check me out on instagram i'm also very active on tiktok it's fun we have a fun group over there come join me um and i'll check y'all in the next video mm -hmm.